Hey y'all, so today we are talking about Unity Cloth Simulation and specifically the cloth component that we're going to add into this scene. It's one of those systems that's very deceptively easy to implement, but deceptively difficult to get to behave the way that you want and to look correct. So I'm going to spend about 10 minutes today showing you how to implement that system, how to start to tweak some variables, what the different parts of the component do, and then we're going to kind of wrap up with walking around the scene and making sure that the cape that we've created behaves how we like. So the first thing that I want to do is kind of high level think about what I want. So from here, I want to do something that's kind of like a superhero cape maybe that I want uh, a long plane that I could then tether to the shoulders of this character. The cloth system in Unity was made uh, or rather designed for character clothing. So it can be used for things like flags and other types of arbitrary kind of off character skinned meshes and whatnot. But it's really going to shine, I believe, when it interacts with the character. Um, if you're using cloth simulation to do something like a flag in a scene, for example, that might be something that you could do in a much more efficient way with something like shader graph, where you could just create a vertex moving shader. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. So. I want to use this character inside of the HDRP sample. I'm in Unity 6. And the very first thing that I want to do is just create a 3D object plane. I'm going to name this Cape. And then let's go ahead and start to drag this in. Now, the nice thing about the default plane is that it has plenty of vertices. So I'm not going to be hurting for this to actually deform appropriately. All right, so let's go ahead and start implementing. So I want to come over here and just look at this from a perspective right behind my character, get it lined up roughly with the character, and start to move this into place, drag in my edges, rotate it up. And it really doesn't need to be perfect right off the get-go. I just want to get something that looks good enough for now. This also means that I don't want it to be as massive as it is right now, or I'll just be dragging it around the scene. Um, it doesn't react with all colliders, so just keep that in mind. You do need to create uh, specific capsule or spherical colliders for this to interact with. And I think for now that'll work. The only other thing that I want to do is just drag this material on here and make sure that the material is set to two-sided. So we've double-sided. Now you can see the underside and the top side, which is what I want. All right. So now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this and add the component called cloth. So now that we have cloth created, let's do a quick run through of what we're looking at. So we have our two buttons up here at the top. The one with the red pins is to create constraints. So that is to basically pin vertices down to where you don't want them to move beyond X amount of distance from their original point. The green one is then self collision. So we're actually going to use both in this and I'm going to use the red one to essentially pin down at the shoulder and the neck, some of these vertices. And then I'll use the green one to effectively stop the bottom of the Cape, uh, from just passing through itself and actually have some collision towards the bottom. So then looking at each of these variables, you have stretching stiffness, which is effectively controls how much your cloth can stretch. So at a stiffness of one, it's not going to stretch. You then have bending stiffness, which is how much the cloth will bend. And that's currently at zero. Um, so if that's more stiff, it's going to bend less. You have tethers, which applies constraints to prevent the moving of cloth particles. So that's what enables kind of our, our pinning system. We then have gravity. If you want to use gravity, we have damping, which is a motion damping coefficient. External acceleration, which is a constant external acceleration. Then you have random acceleration, which is still external acceleration, but it is random. So it has some amount of variance built into it. Then you have our world velocity scale. So that is how much world space movement of the character will affect cloth vertices. You have world acceleration scale, which is how much world space acceleration of the character will affect cloth vertices. Um, I can show you what this looks like in just a bit here, and it gets a little out of whack if you don't have those variables set appropriately. Then you have friction, which is the friction of the cloth when colliding with the character. Collision mass scale, 
which is how much to increase the mass of colliding particles. Use continuous collision enables continuous collision to improve collision stability. Using virtual particles will add one particle uh, per triangle to improve the collision stability. Solver frequency is number of solver iterations per second. Uh, sleep threshold is the cloth's sleep threshold. And then you have capsule colliders and spherical colliders, which are effectively colliders that you can manually create that we're going to create in our experience today. All right, so now that we understand what each of these do, let me go ahead and start with probably the most important piece of this, which will be the pinning of the constraints. I'm just going to dial this in a little bit more. And something like that works. If I were really going to do this um, in all seriousness, I would definitely model it in Blender or Maya or shoot. I'd even model it in Pro Builder just to get some lapel attachments. But for now, let's just get this good enough. So you'll notice uh, once you've selected this tool that you have the visualization tool for selecting, painting, or using a gradient tool. So the gradient tool I tend to use the least, but it effectively paints a gradient between two colors. Uh, you do have to use it in 2D mode, so it's a little bit specific in how you want to use that. Select and paint I use interchangeably. Um, the select is typically you select a, a bunch of vertices and then you kind of apply a max distance to those. So if I want the max distance up here to be zero, I could apply that and now they'll all be zero. However, really what I want to do is to effectively have more constraint the farther out we get. Now what we probably want to do is something that's a bit more, um, there's a bit more grace allowed, especially in the neck area. So what I'm probably going to do is select these five towards the center, and I'm going to make those maybe 0.2, and then I'm going to grab the next two out and make those 0.1, and then I'll just leave the farthest out ones where they're at. Now what I want to do is come down and probably do something not dissimilar from here. And I'm going to make all of these perhaps 0.2, and then we're going to leave most of these where they're at as far as constraints so that they can just kind of freely flow. So I think that all works. Um, I'm also just going to test this very quickly so we can see what this starts to look like. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now what we want to do is start to apply some collisions that we can use to push back against it. So I'm going to use capsule colliders that uh, coincide with my kind of armature of my character. So I want to click on my main character, come down into the hierarchy, and find where I can start to look at the skeleton of what we're doing. So here I really am going to care a lot about the spine, the upper chest, the upper legs, the upper arms, uh, different areas that might hit this cloth. So let's go ahead and start with a few of the, the main ones that I would care about. Uh, let's start with maybe upper chest. And basically the reason that I'm applying these uh, colliders to pieces of the armature is so that it will move with the character innately. Um, the other thing that I want to do is just go ahead and attach the cape to the character so that it will move with the character as well. And I want to do that perhaps at the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the neck, just like that. Now what I want to do is go into upper chest, add a component, and we're going to add a capsule collider. Now from here, I'm going to edit that collider with this little edit bounding volume button. And then I can drag down. Now one thing that you'll notice if you're not accustomed to working with colliders is that when I try to drag this bounds, it doesn't let me drag down. And that is because it's looking to move in the Y axis as far as a capsule, if that makes sense. So what I want to do is set this to a different axis so that I can actually pull this down. So now that's doing a bit more of what I want. And I just want to line this up roughly with the upper chest. So 
something perhaps like that. And it doesn't need to be perfect, um, but I think that's probably getting close. So I'm just going to bring that in on the sides so we don't have some something too weird happen here. Nice. Okay, so that looks pretty good for the upper chest. Now what I want to do is go into right upper arm and do something identical. So from here, I'm going to edit this collider, drag it down roughly into the shape of what I feel an arm should be. And yes, it takes a bit of a uh, kind of playing around with it, but I find it's not too, too difficult to get this done pretty quickly. Something perhaps like that. And maybe I'll, I tend to overshoot on these instead of undershoot just because collision is a little, uh, a little tricky and I don't want the arms poking through. I'm also going to put that over the elbow just so that as that swings back, we'll be good to go. Then we want to go left upper arm, add that capsule collider and do the exact same over here. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, I want to overshoot slightly. And let's say I want to come over to maybe the hips. And in the hips, perhaps I want to do another capsule collider. And this one just going a bit more. Let's go again to the X axis. This one more about kind of the, the lower back and hip area. So I don't want to make this whole tutorial about the creation of colliders. So I'll probably, I'll probably chill for now there. What I might do is add in one or two more colliders um, for the legs, just to make sure that it doesn't intersect with my legs. Um, so I'm just going to do that now and I'll decide in post if we need to speed this up or not. All right, I am happy enough with that. So now what we want to do is come back over into our cape. We want to come down to where it says capsule colliders, and then I've forgotten how many we just made, but let's go ahead and just do five to start. So I know that I have one in the left upper arm. I have one in the right upper arm. I did one in the upper chest. And then I did one in the left upper leg, one in the right upper leg. And then I believe I did one on the hip. So now that I have all of those colliders enabled, uh, it should help to form the cape a bit more. And as I walk, we'll keep the cape from going through my character. So let's go ahead and give this a test. I may just to uh, preempt this, uh, up my dampening to 0.25, just to kind of calm the cloth down a little bit. And let's go ahead and hit play and see how this looks. So you can see there's already something broken. Now let's talk about what that likely is. So what this is, is the camera trying to overcome all the colliders of the, the colliders that we just created, the capsule colliders. So what I want to do is go into right shoulder or rather right upper arm and everything else that we just did this with. And I want to enable is trigger. Um, and doing that is essentially going to disable the default colliders um, with the world. And then it will just use it to derive the collision with our system, which is really what we want. Okay, so that all looks good. Now let's hit play and see if this looks any better. Very nice. Okay, so it does, it does definitely look better. And you can see that it is working, wow, with my character in a pretty believable way. So the next thing I want to do is just calm down how these are intersecting with each other. So let's go ahead and select all of those. 
and add some self collision. And now we should be in a pretty good spot. One of the only things that I will say that's been a negative of my experience working with cloth is that the self collision and intercollision tends to have some bugs in it, or perhaps there's just a piece of the system that is not entirely intuitive. Um, but halfway through working on this, for example, um, the self collision is now turned gray and I'm not able to, to do self collision on even a new plane that I've created in the scene. Um, so just as one word of warning, it appears that the inter collision needs some uh, quirks worked out, but the rest of the system thus far has been working as expected. What I may also want to do is maybe add in a little bit of stretching. I'm going to go to 0.75 there and maybe bring up the stiffness of the bending by 0.25. There's a lot that we can do here. Um, I don't really want to play around with the external acceleration since I have enough happening with my character. And if you see any poking through of your character, all you're going to want to do is either move the collider and or move the the cloth itself up. Like you can see the cloth, I'm kind of setting myself up for failure because I already have it intersecting the character. So maybe I'll do something like this. And hit play and see how this looks. And if it still passes through, then I'm just going to modify my collider so it does just a bit. Let me also pull it back and down just a bit. And now let me come over to my upper chest and drag this out just a bit more. Great, so now let's hit play. And a lot of this gets into tweaking that I'll spare you all the 15 minutes of uh, kind of sitting here with me while I look at this. But this is effectively what I was hoping to get out of this. And this cloth and this cape is looking pretty good for me in this scene. I'm pretty happy with this. And you can see some of the light hitting this cape maybe is showing some of the, the vertices of this cape. So if you wanted to change that, you would uh, just increase the tessellation of this cape and a few other things. And I'm pretty happy with a lot of this functionality. I definitely would want to continue tweaking like for things like a jump or it kind of bunches on itself. But for now, that actually uh, unfurls okay. I'm not too upset about it. Running looks okay. But I think for now, this gives us a really good foundation for how cloth works, what the components are, and a quick look at how to implement something simple like a cape. Again, I wouldn't use a plane. I would probably custom model something in Blender or Maya or otherwise. Um, but I hope that this was helpful for you and at least gets you up and running with the cloth system and Unity 6 that much faster. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope y'all are having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.